All right then, my friends, so we're making some good progress with this application, but there is just a little problem at the minute. If I go over to add a new book, and I'm just going to call this like, hello, doesn't matter what the author is, or the description, and if I create that, it takes us back to the book list, but, well, that new book is not there. And that's because when we add a new book, we're not then refetching the data to update that book list. We only fetch the data once when the application first loads, remember, inside that use effect hook down here, right? If we have a user, we fetch the books. We don't then fetch it again, and we don't update the state either to manually add that book when we create a new one down here, right? So we need to rectify that problem, and there's a few different ways we could approach this. The first way is inside this create book function, we could just manually update the state to include that new book then, right? That would be an option, but I want to do something different. I want to show you how to set up real-time data instead. And what that will do is listen for changes inside our books collection. And whenever that collection changes, for example, if a book gets deleted or if a book gets added, like in this case, then we get notified of that change and it sends us that new book. So we could then add it to the states. So I'm taking this approach because it gives me a chance to show you how to work with real-time data in AppRite, and that can be really useful for many different applications. So there's a few different steps to doing this. The first thing we need to do is go to the AppRite file, the setup file inside that lib folder, and we need to add a new method down here above the other two on the client, and that is called set endpoint. And inside here as an argument, oh, this should be an S, we need to say HTTPS and then cloud.appright.io forward slash v1. All right, so we need to do that first of all, and then we can use this client thing that we export here to set up a new real-time subscription. So we need to import that into this file over here from the AppRite file. So let's do that, import the client, and then where do we want to set up this real-time subscription? Well, it makes sense to set it up inside the use effect hook, doesn't it? Because that's where we initially fetch the books. That's where we should also set up the listener to listen for any events in case users add them or maybe in the future delete books as well. So then what I'm going to do first of all is just create a variable down here. So I'm going to use let because we will change this and I'm going to call it un, if I can spell it unsubscribe. And I'm not going to give this a value just yet. And I'll explain why we need this shortly. The next thing we need to do though is set up a channel that we can subscribe to and listen to. Now a channel in AppRite is basically a string path or an identifier to some service on the server that we want to subscribe to. And you could subscribe to many different services and events like authentication events or file uploads, or in our case, database events. And each type of subscription uses a specific channel format. So you can find a list of all these different real-time channels and their formats on the AppRite documentation, which I would advise you to read. But the one we're going to use in this application is for listening to document events inside a collection. Now to do this, we can say const channel is equal to, and then we'll be using a backtick because I want to output some dynamic values in this string. And the string is databases, first of all, then a dot, and then whatever the database ID is. So we can say dollar sign curly braces, and then we have the database underscore ID value that we created earlier in a different lesson. And we do that all in caps because that's what we named it. So after that, we can say dot collections, then another dot followed by the collection ID. So again, dollar sign curly braces, and then all in caps collection underscore ID which we also have at the top of the file. And then finally, at the end of this, we say dot documents. So this is the format of a channel, which looks like a path, I guess, to a specific resource or a specific set of resources in the AppRite project. In our case, the path is to the documents in the books collection. So when we set up the real-time subscription, we pass it this channel to tell it what to subscribe to, okay? So let's do that now. And actually, we only want to do this inside this if check if a user is authenticated, because if they're not, we shouldn't be fetching any data at all. So down here, we're going to say unsubscribe, which is the variable that we made before, remember, is equal to. And then we want the client, which we imported from the upright file, right? 
And then on that, we want the subscribe method and we invoke it. Now, as an argument, we pass the channel that we want to subscribe to, which we just made. And the reason I'm storing the return value of this method in the unsubscribe variable is because it returns an unsubscribe function, which we can invoke whenever we want to unsubscribe. So we'll use that later. For now, we also need to pass a second argument into this method, which is a callback function. And this callback function fires whenever an event occurs in the channel that we're subscribed to. So for example, a new document being added to the books collection or a document being deleted and so forth. Now, as an argument to this function, we get a response object, which can contains information about whatever event occurred. Now from this response object, we can destructure a couple of different things, which I'm going to do by saying const, then curly braces, and then we want payload and also something called events. And I'll set that equal to the response. So right now I'm grabbing both of those properties from the response object. The payload is any data associated with the event. For example, a new book record, if it's just been added or the deleted book record, if it's just been deleted. The events property is an array of strings, which each describe the event which was triggered or which triggered the response. And they all describe the same event, but they do so in different ways where the string values are constructed in maybe slightly different um, formats. But if a create event occurred, for example, all the strings in the array would describe that create event just in a different way. So we want to listen for any create events in our application, right? And then we want to update the state accordingly using the payload that came with that event. And to do that, we can say if, and then inside parentheses, events, which is that array of events, and then we'll grab the first value in that array, which is generally what I tend to use. And that first value in the array contains a word which describes the event, for example, create or delete, etc. Now we only want to update the state currently if that event includes the word create to signify a new record was created. So we can use the includes method on this event to see if it includes the word create. If it does, then we know the event was a create event and we can update the book state to reflect that using the payload. So I can say in here, set books, and then this time we'll pass in a function to return the new state. And the reason I'm doing this is so we can access an accurate version of the previous state, which is what it currently is before this update. And we get that value as an argument automatically, which I'm going to call prev books. All right. And then we need to return a new value for the book state, which should be an array with all the previous books inside it. So I'm going to use spread syntax to add all of those out. Then a comma followed by the payload, which is the new book record that was just added to the collection sent to us by AppRite in this real time subscription. OK, so now we have this subscription set up. And we're going to try it out in a moment. But before we do that, there's one more thing I want to do, and that is to unsubscribe from this channel when we no longer need it. So to do this, we're going to return a cleanup function from the use effect hook by coming down here and saying return. And we want to return a function which does something. Now inside this function, we're going to say if then in parentheses unsubscribe. And if we have a value for that, then we're going to invoke that function to unsubscribe from real time data. So how does this work then? Well, when we use the use effect hook, we can return what's known as a cleanup function. And this cleanup function runs whenever something triggers a re-render of the component just before the use effect hook runs again. For example, when the user logs out and the user value changes, that triggers this use effect hook to run again. But just before that happens, this cleanup function, which we return here, runs first of all. So that means if a user was logged in and we had a subscription set up, then we'd unsubscribe when they logged out. Does that make sense? All right, so let's try this out. So I'm actually going to just restart the application and then head to the profile page. Let's just have a look at the books. OK, so the hello one is there because we've now refetched the data. Let's add another one and just call this goodbye. Whatever for the author, whatever for the description, I'm going to create this. Hopefully we're going to see that. There it is at the bottom. OK, so now we've got that. So that real time subscription that was set up notified us when that new book was added to the collection. It sent it us and then we added it to the state. And when that gets added to the state, the flatless component creates a new template for us for that new book and adds it to it.